Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our special, unusual event that we here have on this channel. It's about Kotlin multi-platform, Kotlin multi-platform tech talk. So first of all, thank you for joining us today. My name is Alexander and I'm an Android developer at EPAM. Uh, and I believe in Kotlin multi-platform. Uh, you know, uh, in the past I tried different multi-platform approach like Flutter, like React Native, but I believe that uh, Kotlin multi-platform is the future. So uh, let me introduce our agenda that we have today. Uh, we decided to divide our technical talk by two parts. The first part will be uh, presented by ISROC company. It's about code reusing possibilities with Kotlin multi-platform. ISROC company uh, is very famous in Kotlin multi-platform world because they uh, have a huge experience in that and they develop a lot of applications for Kotlin multi-platform and uh, develop uh, tooling and libraries. And uh, the second talk will be dedicated to uh, JetBrains. Uh, we have a QA and a session with them. Uh, I'm not sure that I really need to introduce JetBrains, but uh, you know, this is a very famous uh, company that uh, developed uh, for us uh, IntelliJ ID, Android Studio, and some other beautiful ADAs, and of course, the uh, uh, best language in the world, Kotlin. So uh, before we start, uh, before we start, uh, let me uh, share a uh, Three interesting uh, key facts uh, about uh, and recent updates about Kotlin. You know, uh, Kotlin uh, still isn't beta. Uh, even my grandmother remember in her childhood uh, that it was in beta. But uh, it's going to uh, release very soon, till the end of the year, if I'm not mistaken. And according to words that says JetBrains on their website, it's almost stable. And they work uh, uh, on stability. Uh, the second fact, uh, recently has been released uh, Compose multi-platform. Uh, you know, Jetpack Compose, it's um, a very hot topic uh, today in Android world. Yeah, and uh, Compose uh, multi-platform allows us to share not only business logic, uh, it allows us to share UI uh, with different platforms, desktop, iOS in alpha, and some experiments on web. Uh, it will be very interesting to use this uh, technology in the future. So, and the uh, third uh, um, update that I recently found that uh, officially it's not recommended to uh, use acronym uh, KMM, Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile, uh, because, you know, the scope for this technology is a little bit small. That's why I recommended to say only Kotlin Multi-Platform or, or maybe uh, KMP. So I hope that it raises uh, some of your questions, maybe you're interested. And uh, we are, would like uh, to uh, hear from you, uh, your questions. Please uh, submit your questions in uh, our chat on YouTube or in the link that provided in the description. Uh, with help of this link, we can share uh, your questions to uh, show it on our, our screen and vote for them. And, guys also will see and answer, answer on it. So yeah, please don't hesitate to ask everything related to Kotlin multi-platform or, or just Kotlin. Uh, and uh, let, me, let me introduce uh, to the stream uh, our first speaker that we have today. It's uh, Alexey Labinia uh, from ISROC. He's an Android lead developer at uh, ISROC and Alexander uh, Pogrebniak, uh, the uh, CEO of ISROC company. ISROC is, uh, like I said, uh, like I said uh, they are very big enthusiasts in Kotlin multi-platform world. Uh, they have some, they develop education materials, they develop libraries and uh, courses related to Kotlin multi-platform. And uh, before we start, maybe uh, guys, uh, question for you. How long have you been working with Kotlin multi-platform? <clears throat> Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Alex uh, from ISROC, uh, ISROC, like Alexander said. And uh, actually, we are big uh, Kotlin multi-platform believers. And uh, we have been developing with Kotlin multi-platform already six years from 2017, when, when our CTO 
went uh, vacation and discover discovered a new technology and he tried to uh, make a simple example and it was successful and uh, after this uh, he uh, expand uh, knowledge uh, through Android and iOS department in our company and uh, our adventure with Kotlin platform was started yes and, yeah, sounds, uh, sounds really amazing I hope uh, I believe that uh, in the near future you will write a big book of memories uh, about yeah. Kotlin how it was in infancy and how it's uh, mature right now so uh yeah, guys, uh, the stage is yours uh, right now. Please uh, share your uh, talks uh, and ideas. Welcome. Okay. Uh, anybody see presentation? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> if you don't see, no. please let me <laughs> let me attach on the stream. Okay. No. Mm, hello, everyone. Again. My name is Alexey Labunia, and I am Android developer from ISROC. Today, I would like to tell you about the tasks that can be accomplished using the Kotlin multi-platform mobile in mobile applications. We will explore three, these tasks through real-life project examples and understand where to start when implementing KMM in your own project. But first, let's recap what KMM is all about. KMM is technology that allows you to use the same code across different platforms. Kotlin code can be compiled for iOS, Android, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and more. With shared code, applications work in the same way because the code doesn't differ across platforms. And since the code base is reduced by half, there are fewer bugs in the code. It's important to note that KMM is an ASDK, not a framework. It's a tool that doesn't dictate the developer's rules for the entire application. In other words, developers have the freedom to choose which part of the project they want to use KMM for while using the native libraries for other parts of desired. Now let's explore the results of the official statistics on how developers are using KMM in their projects. Uh, the majority of developers are using KMM to share data models. Some of them sharing network and data serializations. Nearly two thirds of them already migrated algorithm and various computations to share code. At least a quarter of all multi-platform users are sharing view models, controllers, presenters, and state management. You can scan the QR code to explore the detailed results. Now let's examine a few examples of how certain tasks can be solved using KMM in mobile development. Let's start with network requests. Since they don't differ between platforms, we can create a repository class in the shared code and define our request there. To achieve this, uh, we can use KITOR client, a multi-platform library by JetBrains for network communication. Uh, we can also utilize Kotlin X serialization, another JetBrains library, for parsing server responses. <clears throat> by incorporating these libraries, we can connect the shared repository class to both iOS and Android applications, and everything will work seamlessly. On iOS, suspend function can be called as a regular function with a callback, and errors will be propagated correctly. Uh, okay, we've covered authentication. Now let's discuss what happens after successful authentication in the application. Typically, after successful authentication, the user's data is stored in the device parameters and in subsequent app logins, the authentication information is automatically filled in. This task can also be handled in the shared code. 
and we can utilize the multi-platform settings library to assist us. To make the process more convenient, let's create a Reaper class in the shared code called k-value storage to ensure that only relevant data is stored. Inside this class, uh, we can define the necessary properties that in, in interact directly with the setters. Uh, we pass the setting object from each platform, meaning that we directly access system-specific storage, such as shared preference on Android and user defaults on iOS, real system storage mechanisms. We can achieve this by using expect and actual functions. After implementing authentication, we decide to jump into Figma to see the design and understand the app's overall behavior. We observe the following screen, which is four states, loading, error, empty, and data. This is where state management comes into play, which remains the same for both Android and iOS. We have already moved the, all the requests and data models to the shared code. The screen state is based on this data, which means we can handle the state management in the shared code as well. How do we accomplish this? Based on received data, we will construct the state stored in the variable, and the platform will subscribe to changes in this variable to render the appropriate UI. However, someone needs to maintain this variable and handle the state management. Who will take care of that? State management typically uh, relies on a specific architecture, such as MVP, MVVM, or MVI which holds the state variable and provide it to the UI. In our case, we follow the MVVM approach and have developed the Mocha MVVM library. This library allows us to use the Android view model in the shared code and create it for both Android and iOS platforms. On the screen, uh, we see the public API for the authentication view model uh, it includes fields for the authentication token, the screen state that the UI will subscribe to, actions that can be triggered in the UI, a method that is called when the button is pressed. In the same view model, we simply create a sealed interface that represents all the possible screen state uh, we can have. Additionally, we add a property in the view model that will hold the current state. Well, we will handle the state on the platform by subscribing to it and triggering a handler function. This function will uh, be responsible for updating UI elements such as button colors and image rendering based on the data, data stored in the state. Okay, uh, now let's consider the scenario where we need a full-fledged database for our offline-first application. <clears throat> if we were developing a native application, we would likely use Room and Realm for Android and Core Data and possibly Realm again for iOS. For NoSQL, database, Realm is also suitable and already exists in the Kotlin multi-platform mobile framework, although it's still in beta version. As for traditional SQL database, SQL Delight is a suitable option. It is also available in KMM and allows you to write regular SQL queries while generating code for more convenient usage. On the screen, you can see an example table and couple of queries for adding and deleting records. In the shared code, we can simply add the following methods to our repository, 
which will directly invoke the corresponding methods on the DAO object, the generated object for working with the table. Let's move to the next task. Okay, based on the design, we can see that the screen's content depends on factors such as whether the user is opening the app for the first time, the number of wallets the user has, the presence of referrals, and so on. To implement the screen, it appears that certain elements are similar or nearly dupli duplicated. In this case, we can consider representing them as a list of items. We can create a list-based approach where each item represents a specific element on the screen based on the user's data and app state. We dynamically populate the list with the appropriate elements, including any variation of conditional logic required. By using a list-based approach, we can efficiently manage the screen's content and adapt it based on the usage state and data. Here are the possible group into which we can divide the elements. Now I would like to transfer the control of these elements to the shared code and pass them to the platform in the state. This platform can mm, then handle the re rendering the screen accordingly. Uh, all right, let's begin with sealed interface that lists all the possible elements that can be present on our screen. Here's a couple of them in more detail. In these elements, we can include everything we need for rendering. Lambdas for handling click events, data, and more. We have the flexibility to include any necessary components required for displaying and interacting with the element. After defining the elements, we create our items by relying on various conditions to assemble the necessary list. For example, if the user is logging for the first time, we add certain elements related to the onboarding progresses. If the user has a premium subs subscription, we include units with helpful tips. If there are referral associated with the user's account, we add units containing referral information. Otherwise, we include a unit encouraging the user to refer others. By evaluating this condition, any dynamically adding the appropriate elements to the list, we can create a customized screen that adapts to the user states, user specific state. Once the load state is reached based on the appropriate logic, we assemble the list of elements and add it to the screen state. Now, the question is how we handle these elements on the platform. If you're using Jetpack Compose, you can simply map this object to the desired list elements using the appropriate composables. Similarly, in the Swift UI, you can perform a similar mapping operation. However, if you are working with older XML-based views and UI kit, you can leverage our multi-platform library called Mocha Units. This library provides a special recycler view adapter for Android and data source for iOS, which allow you to populate a single adapter or data source with variety of different elements. You can find more information about this library in our materials, including the readme, articles on our website, and videos on YouTube. Well, the next task involves the screen uh, all three screen. Ah. On screens on the slide, uh, all of them can attach a photo. Firstly, when we press the button, an alert will appear asking us where we want to take the photo from. 
uh, either by capturing it with a camera or selecting it from the gallery. Depending on our choice, a system notification will then prompt us to grant the app permission to access the camera or gallery. To handle permission, let's first understand how to obtain them on each platform. On Android, uh, we request permissions by directly asking the user. The permission response will be received in a callback. And once we have the necessary permission, we can pr proceed with intended action. As for iOS, the process is similar. Requesting permission and receiving the response in a callback before moving forward. Since the behavior of identical, it makes sense to extract this functionality into the shared code. We have developed the Mocco permission library to accomplish this. Here's an example of requesting permission in the shared code using oops, our library. By calling a single method, if the user denies permission, the method will throw one or two errors, denied or denied always. If no exception are thrown, it means we have permission and can proceed with the intended action. Now that we have the necessary permission, we can move forward with capturing the photo. For this purpose, we can utilize another multi-platform library called Mocco Media. Working with the Mocha Media library is similar to using Mocha permission. We call a single method specifying the source from which we want to obtain the photo, and the library takes care of the rest of the process. In general, uh, with Kotlin multi platform mobile, it is possible to share even the UI code. We accomplished this in 2019 when we extract the UI into the native shared code and create the Mocha widgets library, which allowed us to render UI elements from the shared code instead of relying on Canvas drawing. After that, we developed an application that was fully written in Kotlin for both Android and iOS platforms. We described the screen using familiar containers, scrolls, and other UI components. Here's an example of authentication screen. However, an encountered disappointment with when it came to the compilation time of Kotlin native. Waiting for around five min minutes just to change the color of button and then re Releasing that we made a mistake and we have to wait another five minutes became a problem, big problem. Therefore, we decided to discontinue support for this library. Currently, JetBrains is actively working on Jetpack Compose, which looks quite promising. Additionally, there's a library called Redwood that is expected to have a stable version in early 2024. Overall, if it's safe to say that extracting UI into the shared code is a realistic task. Now let's discuss how to determine what can be extracted into the shared code and what cannot. The principle is quite simple. If something works differently on different platform, it is not suitable for extraction into the shared code. For example, let's consider working with NFC. On Android to working with NFC, you can first need to obtain permission and then simply start the scanning method, which will continue scanning until it is interrupted. On iOS, the behavior for working with NFC is different. After processing the button, the scanning starts immediately and continue for 15 seconds. If nothing is found during this scanning process, the users need to initiate the scanning again. Based on this behavior, in the shared code, we can define a method called on NFC scanned, for example, 
that will be called when the platform successfully scans something and pass the data to the shared code. Another example of tasks that you don't need to share is sending video files with guaranteed delivery. The goal here to ensure that files from a specific folder in the device storage are reliably uploaded to the server. To achieve this, we need a background upload scheduler that automatically uploads any newly added files. In case of upload errors, the scheduler will retry the upload attempts. Additionally, we need to handle resumable uploads to continue from the previous point in case of any interruptions. In the end, it was discussed to implement this functionality separately on the each platform due to the following reason. First, file management. Uh, there was no built-in file management capability in the shared code, so implementing it would have required creating a custom solution, which was no straightforward given as an available option. Currently, library like OK exists for file operation. Uh, the second one is background execution. On Android, background execution is handled through background service, while on iOS, it's managed through background tasks. The behavior difference between these two mechanisms requires a platform-specific implementation. In this scenario, the shared code can handle determining which file needs to be uploaded based on the platform's file information. When it comes to initiating the actual upload process, the shared code can communicate with the platform-specific implementation, triggering them to start the necessary operation using the respective mechanisms. Uh, in the conclusion, in the community, many developers who use Kotlin multi-platform mobile are already exploring sharing few models, which means that even since clients can achieve a reasonable code sharing percentage. Secondly, there is already significant amount of material available for trying out KMM, which is great those interested in adapting the technology. It provides resources and guidance to help developers get started and leverage the benefits of code sharing. However, not everything in the platform-specific code should be necessarily pulled into the shared code. When the behavior of platforms differs significantly, it becomes more challenging and complex to extract such functionality into the shared code. It's important to carefully evaluate the difference between platforms and consider whether the benefits of code sharing outweigh the potential drawbacks and complexities. Uh, that's all. Here are my contacts and two Telegram channels dedicated to multi-platform development, where you will definitely receive answer if you have any question. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Alexey, for the great talk. It was really interesting and the, you know, so, so many libraries um, uh, you as a company developed. Uh, so uh, let me introduce what we're we going uh, to do right now. Uh, we have a small Q&A with IceRock and later we proceed together with IceRock and JetBrains and answer on all uh, questions. And now uh, let's let's maybe choose some questions uh, for you and and try to answer them. So the first question that we have in the, the chat is about how can we use Java security package in KMP, such as asymmetric encryption? Mm. It's very interesting because it's one of problems that I work just now. Uh, if you want use in Java security package, it's a native library. You need 
create uh, use um, actual functions for iOS and Android. Um, in fact, you use some native libraries for iOS. You use some native library in Android in and in shared code, you just trig trigger them. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, maybe a question uh, from uh, my side to uh, Alexander. Um, you know, uh, the name of uh, libraries uh, uh, reminds me many other libraries named like Mopo, Makita, uh, something to like mockups. Uh, uh, Alexander, why did you choose uh, the name uh, for the, such libraries, uh, name them like Moko? Yeah, uh, it's a very interesting question because uh, our team uh, had uh, thinking about this uh, for a long time and uh, even they uh, starting started a pool uh, with uh, some number of uh, possible names and uh, Mocha was a winner. Uh, it just uh, named Mobile Kotlin. And uh, actually, in our uh, company, we started to develop Boko uh, backend on Kotlin. And uh, this is a bunch of uh, libraries that uh, helps uh, to developers uh, to use Kotlin uh, on the backend side uh, as the title. Uh, it's just uh, just simple mobile Kotlin. Yeah, I like the name Boca and Moka. Yeah. Oh, it's very, very like funny. two brothers, you know. Yeah, yeah. Moka and Moka. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's proceed to with another question that we have on YouTube uh, from Ardik Mehta. Question: If I have to avoid creating separate native solutions. Should I opt for KMP or Flutter is fine? Mm. I choose KMP because in Flutter is a framework. If you use Flutter, you must use Flutter only. If you use KMP, you can share some code to the KMP, KMM, and mm, some code for UI, UI, for example, can be native. You can use Jetpack Compose if you want. You can use XML-based UI. On iOS, you can use UIKit or Swift UI. And the UI will be what you same experience that user already have. It's not will be something on Canvas Draw. It will be native UI. Yeah, and uh, another part of, uh, of the answers is uh, it depends uh, what uh, do you want. Uh, if you want to use uh, these frameworks for developing uh, from a scratch, uh, it will be the one option. Uh, if you already has uh, some product, some uh, project uh, that using, uh, for example, Swift and Kotlin uh, on the uh, platforms, uh, it will be uh, impossible to use Flutter, as I remember. Maybe very hard to use Flutter uh, in this uh, case. But uh, you use uh, Kotlin multi-platform uh, very uh, is very easy uh, to starting uh, integrate uh, Kotlin multi-platform features, uh, libraries, and starting to use and developing sharing library, uh, sharing library, sharing model between iOS and Android. Uh, it depends from different reasons. Uh, actually, uh, Flutter is much easier for uh, learning, for understanding uh, for new developers. And uh, that's why maybe uh, Flutter uh, was uh, so famous uh, framework. Uh, Kotlin multi-platform, uh, from my point of view, it, it's uh, slightly harder to understand, to, to learn, and uh, maybe to starting using. But uh, in the projects, then you hard to uh, has identically, technically, uh, um, 
actions from the projects, uh, it will be great for you to use Kotlin multi-platform because it's technically uh, identical uh, activity for the projects. Actually, it's uh, maybe the most uh, famous uh, questions uh, to us uh, when guys uh, starting to know about Kotlin multi-platform. It's, I think it's a second questions. Oh, uh, how you can compare Flutter and Kotlin multi-platform? <clears throat> yeah, I know how it's difficult and I suggest you guys to try it by your own hands to better to compare and understand. It's uh, really, really difficult to understand um, without, without trying it by hands. Okay, uh, guys, thank you again for the great presentation. And uh, let's proceed with question. And uh, we are going to invite right now on the stream JetBrains. Let me add, guys. Hello. Hello. Hello, Pamela. Hi, hi. Hello, Constantine. Hi. Uh, let me hi, make maybe a, a brief introduction. Uh, Pamela is a developer advocate for Kotlin multi-platform and Konstantin is a Kotlin multi-platform developer. It means that uh, Konstantin developed Kotlin multi-platform. Uh, and maybe uh, the first question uh, from my side uh, to uh, Konstantin. Uh, let's begin with Konstantin. Konstantin, how is it different to uh, develop between uh, development uh, Android applications and development tooling for Kotlin multi-platform? Uh, I don't know how to answer the question because, you know, <laughs> usually I, I use the same Kotlin. I, 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 I write the same code base, but maybe uh, now I use a different, you know, SDKs and libraries for the tooling development, but if you're a good engineer, it doesn't matter what you're uh, developing. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, sometimes I, I a little bit miss about UI development uh -huh. because usually our UI is your terminal output. But, yeah. It, it's... Uh, you, usually you have to... You, you have to make the same solutions as, you know, the cache lifetime, uh, network requests, and something like that. Oh, yeah. I like UI and I like recent updates with related um, Compose multi-platform. It's amazing opportunity to uh, share UI. And that's why I prefer to stay uh, Android developer instead of um, development tooling. OK, uh, Pamela. The question for you, maybe the the most uh, frequently asked question uh, for you: What 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 job responsibilities of developer advocate? Well, clearly, it's answering questions from awesome community members like yourselves. It's also um, making web, doing webinars, doing podcasts, writing blogs, speaking at conferences, and so on. But how it helps to develop uh, Kotlin? Oh, I see what you're saying. So it just helps with awareness. And also we get feedback from the audience about using Kotlin multi-platform, how they're using it. And we can maybe increase the, uh, improve the way that um, our tooling works or improve the way that Kotlin works or Kotlin multi-platform works. And so we just, um, we, it's sort of a two-way street. We sort of stand in between the development team and the a developer audience. Okay. Thank you, uh, guys. And uh, let's maybe begin with questions that we have right now on YouTube. I'll pop up them and then we will proceed uh, with questions on Slido. So uh, here we have the question from Vladislav Leskiv. Let me share it. If uh, we will go with KMM plus Compose multi-platform, for what parts we still need to write that from dependent code? Uh, um, do you want to answer that question? Yeah, I, I can start. Uh, you will proceed. 
Uh, so I think you have to you have to write your platform dependent conf code for the for parts of your application which requires platform dependent code. For example, as we mentioned before, it can be security stuff. It can be some device uh, specific, not drivers. How to say uh, device specific? Maybe for example, some uh, GPS internal stuff. I don't know. Uh, so for that Trace part ID. of your yeah. yeah for that part of your application you you have to use platform specific code, but uh, I hope in the future a lot of uh, a lot of this task will be covered by community libraries because it's it's easier for development when you have some specific code in library which wraps for you platform dependent uh, specifics. So maybe uh, for the typical application at the moment, you you won't be you won't be right platform dependent code because it 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 was wrapped for you uh, by some Kotlin multi platform libraries. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the hope is that eventually we'll have so many multi-platform libraries that it won't be so necessary to write your own platform-specific code. Um, I wanted to just mention, so Kostya has this amazing repository called KMM Awesome. And on that repository, there is actually like a list of libraries. We had a previous question about security and encryption. So on that library, there's a long list of um, encryption libraries that are multi-platform already. So please go check out KMM Awesome, Kostya's uh, repo, and um, you'll see the libraries that are available there. And then you don't have to use the expect actual mechanism to use with the J your JVM solution. You can just use the multi-platform solution. Um, by the way, uh, the link for Kotlin multi-platform Awesome uh, is added in the description. Please check these links. It's uh, Really nice digest of uh, very popular libraries on Kotlin multi platform. So, yeah, and uh, can I append uh, something from our side? Actually, we had experience with uh, Kotlin multi platform plus the compost already in a production project, and our CTO you know, was delivered some part of project. Uh, and uh, he used uh, just uh, Kotlin Mobile multi-platform and Compose for both platform without uh, platform dependent code. Uh, he said that uh, he had some issues uh, on I iOS uh, side, but uh, he was uh, uh, enough uh, happy about Android side. And uh, actually today we had uh, some estimation uh, where a customer asked uh, using uh, Compose multi-platform for four platforms for iOS, for Android, Windows, and macOS, and uh, actually our CTO starting discovered how it will be on uh, uh, Windows and uh, macOS part because uh, for iOS and for Android is quite known for us, but uh, not. Uh, for uh, other platforms. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Valodia, for an interesting question. OK, let's proceed with another that I have on YouTube. Um, maybe it's related to the uh, talk, uh, to the presentation uh, with Zork. Uh, yeah, your recommendation for sharing view model. Should we share on view model for both platform? If yes, which tools do you recommend? Uh, I suppose uh, it was question to Alexei uh, <laughs> during speech, during his speech. Maybe Konstantin can. Uh, yeah, I can share things. my thoughts about the question because, you know, I, I, I would say it's more fun to ask about some archi uh, what what the uh, what architecture is the best for the mobile development. There are so much approaches and. Uh, it it is so called holy wars in the internet uh, on which architecture is better. So the same for that. Uh, yeah, you can share your view model uh, written in Kotlin for both platforms, or you can go another way. You can uh, implement 
your view model separately on each platform as as you want. Maybe uh, you can share only some small common part, for example, only analytics or only lo logging uh, between iOS, Android, and other platforms. It depends on you and depends on your team inside company. And if you decide to share your code on Maximum, you can share everything using Compose multi-platform. Uh, yeah, so there is no uh, concrete answer on the question. All depends. Okay. And just to mention, uh, sorry, just to mention, there's Moco MVVM um, for sharing your view models. And then there's also by Rick Clefas, there's KMM view model for sharing view models as well. Uh, you can also mm -hmm. roll your own if you really wanted to. Um, Constantine explained it to me earlier. It's actually pretty simple. You can just have a look at what the folks at TouchLab did in their camp kit example, and you it should give you a good idea of what, what to do there. Okay, good. Uh, so we have another question. For example, on our code base with a ton lines of code, how do you assess and find out where to begin with KM migration? How would the playbook look like on a high level? Um, I can explain how 9gag actually went went ahead and started with their my with their um changes to KM, KMP um, and what they did was they started out by just so after their project set up and everything was um, sort of you know this the project was set up they actually started by sharing constants and then after that sharing uh, utilities and then after that they only sh started sharing business logic and things that you can share mm -hmm. with business logic are things like the data model the networking um, you can share your analytics which would sort of you know um, you, which is a common scenario for, for people but you can sort of you make blocks for yourself of things I, I sometimes think like I want to take the most irritating, boring stuff and start sharing that first so that it's like super consistent across all across the board. And then like the iOS developers or whoever is consuming these libraries will be super excited to like just use this library so that nobody else is like and nobody else has to be bored with writing the, the boring analytics code. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with uh, Pamela, and uh, I would say that uh, in our experience, uh, sometimes uh, we asked uh, about how we can start and uh, what first we should do, and uh, actually we, uh, we recommended to set up the development and starting from uh, from small, small step, uh, just uh, set up uh, environment, and uh, for example, for analytics, it's a good example. And uh, for, it can be maybe file, maybe some static files or something like this, uh, and expand uh, using KMM step by step. When you prove it, when you release it, when you uh, for fix maybe some issues, and for the team it will be a great and very slightly uh, diving, uh, slightly uncomfortable diving. Uh, especially for iOS team, uh, diving to another technical step. Because for Android, nothing is special. It's uh, uh, the same environment, same technology, same programming language, and so on. But for iOS, it's completely new. And uh, sometimes iOS developers uh, are not likely uh, to using something uh, else from Apple ecosystem. Yeah, actually, we have uh, questions related to iOS and iOS developers will talk later a bit about it. Uh, so let's proceed with the next question. And uh, could you please share useful links for KMM because not enough present in the internet. So uh, check the description uh, uh, under this uh, YouTube video. Uh, Kotlin Awesome, yeah, consists uh, all of links uh, with libraries, with useful materials, but maybe guys there are another source of true with libraries approach for Kotlin multiplayer you would like to share kotlinlang.com yeah yeah and, uh, 
Kotlin Lang. Uh, I would like to mention that on a official site Kotlin Lang, we mm -hmm. we have a, there is a page with the success stories of big companies who migrated on the Kotlin multi platform, and each story it is full article about the migration, about the success story, and maybe not very success. It depends on the cases, but each story contains uh, links to other sources, so you can explore it. Mm -hmm. And of course, Kotlin Conf, uh, the bunch of videos starting from 2018, uh, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, speeches uh, about Kotlin multi-platform and uh, with different experience, different uh, paths uh, of discovering and using. Yeah, and nowadays YouTube is good database, info based <laughs> for the each topic, so you can just search on YouTube videos about Kotlin multi-platform, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. early adopters and uh, some dev advocates and other people shares uh, a lot of information about multi-platform development. By the way, uh, guys from JetBrains have uh, own uh, Kotlin YouTube channel, even with uh, YouTube Reels. So, uh, yeah, let's let's proceed with another question. Uh, when will Compose multi-platform for iOS be released? Uh, it was in alpha. It was released recently. Is in alpha, maybe. Guys, uh, can you provide more uh, exact plans or I, schedule? I, I, I think you have to know that big companies uh, never say about uh, future plans with the concrete date. <laughs> Sorry. As soon as possible. <laughs> okay, I see. Okay, well, let's proceed with another question. Is there a plan to support compiling Kotlin to risk V architecture? Oh. I wasn't prepared for that question, so I think <laughs> no. you, you have to ask our Kotlin native team about yeah. that. Yeah, so, so a good way, resource to ask uh, is there's a Kotlin Lang Slack as well, um, where it's like a Slack workspace and there's a multi-platform channel where you can chat to people from um, JetBrains and you can perhaps ask them your risk. Of your architecture question, and they'll know better than us. Yeah. Okay, the second question uh, What is the most simple architecture for KMP? If I want to use coroutines, flows with KTOR, no data persistent, no clean architecture, ideally I want to UDF with no view models. Mm -hmm. uh, I see the problem in the question because. I, I don't see the problem between clean architecture and UDF. <laughs> and uh, again, uh, the, the question about the best architecture, uh, which we cannot answer properly. So you can use, uh, I would say that Kotlin multi-platform, it is not some specific framework, some specific way to write your code. You can write, uh, your code as you want, uh, as 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 you did it before, but it will be compiled uh, not only for the GVM target. So I, I I would say that continue as you like, but with the multi-platform. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your advice, Constantine. So the question is similar that I asked on Slido. <laughs> Uh, do you plan to make something similar to Flutter Pub there for KMP? Flutter Pub uh, is package for manager for Flutter, containing reusable libraries, package created by community. Um, as far as I know, we don't have any plans, but I'll definitely take this forward to our team and suggest it to them because I had a look and it looks really impressive, but not as far as I know. Yeah, and uh, I can add a little, little bit that uh, Flutter Pub Dev uh, is a, for the Dart ecosystem, which which is based on source publishing libraries, but Kotlin is based on the binary publishing to Maven repositories, which is uh, the main repository is Maven Central. So uh, 
we have some uh, we have some support of Marvin Central inside our ideas. So yep, we we don't have specific plans to make something new. We don't have plans to migrate something else from the Marvin publications. I know that some developers think that Marvin publication is difficult and you have to do a lot of some cryptic stuff for for the publishing your library but uh, this is all for your security for the some other topics but yeah uh, answer for the question no we don't have a such plan yeah okay, actually uh, so, so, sorry uh, some times ago we created a simple resources uh, I don't know, Alexander, how I can uh, share this link. Lips.kmp.isrock.dev. It's uh, quite hard to type it, but... Uh, you will add it in the it... description. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so we will uh, collect uh, the li all libraries that we know about uh, Kotlin multi-platform and uh, any developers from the community can publish uh, their own library and we will edit of course uh, in it's something like public uh, repository and uh, please use it uh, if you want uh, to looking for uh, any library for your purposes oh, by the way uh, i have follow-up question about some kind of support of uh, libraries developers could you pamela share some some updates about that Oh, are you talking about the Cotton Foundation grants? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we recently uh, announced the uh, the winners of um, some grants from the Cotton Foundation, where um, a lot of um, Kotlin projects, like for example, Coil and KM, um, KMP um, Coroutine, native coroutines and, and lots of other um, libraries got support from the Cotton uh, Foundation um, to do various things and improve the ecosystem. Quill, for example, um, was also like a Quill and um, Quill was, the, uh, the grant for Quill was to make them make it a multi-platform um, solution for image loading. And um, ne uh, KMP native coroutines was just to um, to to just enhance it even further. Um, and there were a whole bunch of other um, libraries and so on. So so it, it, we just wanted to like show support for um, the way that, you know, the, the community is really coming together and creating really amazing like libraries. And uh, it's not that we don't don't appreciate everyone, but we there were some focus points that we wanted to to um, you know just shine a little light on and say like these projects um, you know are doing great and we just want to support them a little bit. So yeah, just a, there was a tweet announcement of all the very and there's also a blog post I think I believe um, with all the winners of that of those grants. Thank you. Thank you for such updates. Yeah, guys, please contribute to library and make Kotlin great. Uh, so uh, here we have another question. Uh, as a mobile tech lead, how would you convince upper management to try KMM out and how to prove it's better than Flutter and other multi-platform? So... Um, part of our developer advocacy um, activities at JetBrains, we have this podcast called Atom, and we interviewed somebody from meetup.com where, where they organize all these meetups and so on. And they recently, um, they recently created a KMP app of their own. Um, and the, the, in, the VP of engineering, Anise Davis, was one of the... Um, one of the guests on that show and she really like I, I think she spoke in a really nice way of on you know upper upper engineering management level um, to explain her thinking of it so I would like maybe just pass on that you know go and find that link um, under the podcast section of Kotlin uh, the Kotlin channel and 
um, go and suggest that your upper management have a look at that. But something that interesting that she said to me, um, that she said to us, was, for example, um, when she was for uh, when she was trying to convince some of the IRS team members to um, not only just to let her try this KMP project, but also to contribute. You know, they were saying like, what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? Then we have to write everything over again. And she said, what if it doesn't work? You know, what is the worst possible thing? And then they said, oh, well, I guess then we just write the business logic over again. So in, in their case, because they started small and because they – um, they realized that um, they could check in with their upper management the whole time and say, you know, be active and say like, oh, this isn't working or this is really working, um, that it really worked out for, for meetup.com. And a lot of other companies have the same experience where um, they do a hackathon, the upper management sees, hey, you know, clearly developer productivity worked really well. The team liked it. Um, you know, things were more consistent, the code was more consistent, the behavior was more consistent, um, and all these other different benefits of KMP um, it was, like, clearly exemplified by their, their participating in, like, hackathons and so on. So I would suggest, um, try and suggest a hackathon to your uh, upper management, but also pass on that Atom link. I'll, I'll send it through to Alexander a little bit later. And Maybe just see if you can get them to watch it. Um, yeah, it's uh, really sharp nice. video. I also would like to watch it for me. And share with your upper management our page with uh, uh, success stories with the Kotlin multi platform. Because yes. every and story says about the, how they how they convince with the management about that. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, uh, with uh, which uh, brands uh, Kotlin multi-platform officially working? I, I heard about Netflix, Nine Gag, Lyra Merlin, maybe some others. You can share. Quizlet, yeah, Quizlet, yeah. Philips, Autodesk, uh, Down Dog, yes. Autodesk, so yeah. Keshap. Oh, Keshap, of course we know Keshap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jake Horton. <laughs> use mm. ever since the Kotlin prize. Okay, and maybe let me rephrase this question uh, to Alexander a little bit because he is already upper manager. Uh, yeah, and how uh, he advertise, uh, how you advertise Kotlin multi-platform for potential customers? Could you share some maybe insights about it? Yeah, yeah it's a difficult part of uh, our job because Nobody knows uh, about Kotlin multi-platform when, when we started and especially through the customers because uh, there are a lot of customers uh, are not uh, technical guys or don't uh, doesn't have any technical department and uh, they ask uh, any technical guy, do you know something about Kotlin multi-platform? Of course not. And they thought that uh, Icerock said about some a dream or something uh, unbelievable uh, about native sharing code uh, using on iOS and Android part uh, without Flutter, without reactive, React Native and so on because it was uh, six years ago and uh, when we started uh, it was uh, hard uh, for us to uh, spread uh, this information and we uh, thank you a lot. Of, uh, we want to say thank you to JetBrains because they helped us uh, a lot. And uh, we definitely uh, can uh, say that JetBrains, uh, this is technology of JetBrains and uh, everybody knows JetBrains, of course. And uh, right now it's uh, much simpler. Uh, right now there are a lot of companies who uh, knows about it and uh, even who wants to try and uh, f uh, as I mentioned today I, uh, f uh, some estimation for compost multi-platform e even compost multi-platform because this technology is just uh, on uh, beta or alpha I, I, I don't remember actually and uh, we uh, we try to 
convinced through the technical aspects. Uh, we show the details, we uh, show the, some marketing uh, promotion, we uh, discovered our uh, case studies, uh, and we try to publish uh, all our case studies on our site. And uh, we uh, try to uh, explain uh, all the whole aspects and um, even the big uh, tech company. Uh, we several years ago we have uh, we had experience with a big technical company and actually we started uh, to uh, integrate Kotlin multi-platform, but they have a bunch they had a bunch of questions and uh, our technical uh, guys uh, solved it and created the roadmap how you can expand expand how you can go through these changes and how you can solve it and of course we supported this uh, this company and we help it because uh, we uh, also want to big cases uh, by our hands or by another uh, for, uh, outsource agency uh, to show this uh, show that this technology works and uh, this technology have uh, great potential from our opinion and uh, uh, of course and compose too thank you thank you for sharing this insight i believe it it helps your competitors wish you success yes. also welcome uh, okay uh yeah maybe it's this question related to other uh, sorry is asked it before can you provide some sources for kotlin beginners yeah, apart from linking and learning. Any resources for dummies, for young people, um, on grandmothers, grandfathers, any? Could you share maybe? Yes, so there's definitely, um, there's the Kotlin cones, K-O-A-N-S, that you can use to, if you're, maybe if you're a programmer, but you want to learn the, simp the, the basics of um, Kotlin itself, you can use Kotlin cones. There's, of, of course, uh, the official documentation as well. But I would recommend having a look at Kotlin in Action by uh, various people from JetBrains. Um, it's published by Manning Publishers. And then there's also another book, Programming Kotlin by Dr. Venkat Sabramanyam. And that is by the Pragmatic, uh, the pragmatic Programmers. Um, and, you know, that's if you're more of a book person. But you can also just YouTube. Um, they, I think um, Svetlana Isikova had a, uh, a very interesting uh, course, like a massive online course that you could do um, for, for Java developers that uh, wanted to learn Kotlin as well. So there's, there's some free courses that, that are very high quality that you can learn Kotlin as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, let's proceed with uh, Slido, the call that we have. Let me let me begin from the top. Yeah, these questions was already answered about our dev. About dev. Yeah, please listen our recordings uh, later. I mark it as answered. So uh, the question from Vladislav Balatayev. How different is the application performance on KMM and native? Maybe this question for Konstantin. Yeah, I, I can try to answer it. So uh, every discussion about performance uh, should be uh, should be based on some uh, concrete, uh, con concrete or typical, I don't know, not templates, but sample applications or something like that. We have a lot of, you know, um, performance checkers and something like that. But again, you you can write the code which will uh, work better on Flutter. Uh, another code which which will work better on I don't know on Swift or something like that. But generally, uh, I have to say that theoretically there is no reason to be uh, much slower than uh, native code on Swift uh, mm -hmm. uh, for code uh, which was written in Kotlin multi-platform because it will be 
compiled to native binary. Uh, there is no some specific virtual machine between uh, executed code and your system. So it should be as fast uh, as, fast as uh, regular native code. So I, I think the general answer, it, it can be uh, the same speed as for the native uh, native code, but it depends on your specific case. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so let's proceed with another question. How is it we do Flutter? What can add KME to the ecosystem that adds new value? I think it's for Pamela. Well, Kotlin, Kotlin is awesome, isn't it? So Kotlin has such an amazing ecosystem already and it's such an amazing language. Um, of course, I'm very, very biased. I'm, I'm not a massive f fan of Dart. It's still, it's still growing and so is Kotlin, but Kotlin has a couple of years on it. And what I like about, um, what I like about KMP, um, adding to the ecosystem is that the interop is, you know, that you don't have to write plugins. You don't have to like, uh, like with Flutter and React Native, you don't have to write plugins and stuff. Everything is already, it's native interop. Um, but of course you writing in Kotlin, which is like everyone's favorite language, right? And we also now have Compose multi-platform, which is bringing that extra step of like making it a really good competitor for Flutter. Um, so I think that's what add, adds it. What what it what adds um, what it adds to the ecosystem. I don't know if Constantine has something else to to add. No, I think you gave a good answer. Thanks. Maybe we can also answer on. Uh, question uh, a little bit below what's the difference between Kotlin and Flutter framework? Uh, can, we, uh, can we add something here? Yeah, I can answer that. Mainly, uh, Kotlin framework contains less internals, uh, like, you know, as I know, I'm not the profi in the Flutter frameworks. Yeah, I have to mention it. But Flutter frameworks framework contains inside the uh, quite quite big uh, flutter runtime because uh, flutter doesn't have the straightforward interoperable with the system you have to use some channels between your dart code and your system so uh, for that you have to have some specific runtime for that of course kotlin framework contains uh, own runtime inside for the garbage collection for the uh, and standard library of course but uh, the same Flutter framework contains inside but Flutter contains some additional stuff for the uh, virtualization own virtualization inside but Kotlin framework doesn't have it so I think uh, it is the main difference that Kotlin framework a little bit uh, lighter. Mm -hmm. uh, let me add maybe a little bit here um, what's related to Flutter framework. When you develop Flutter applications, you uh, also need to care about native uh, part of code uh, or have Flutter developers who develop Android and iOS have some knowledge in this sphere and it doesn't replace at all native approach. Of course, uh, UI for Flutter, it um, can be fastly developed, but um, Kotlin also today provides an approach uh, as a Compose multi-platform. Yeah, by the if way. If I'm not mistaken, it's uh, it also has uh, some Mm. It's based on Skia, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's Flutter also. Yeah, by the way, it's a really good point that Flutter framework, uh, uh, as you remember, Flutter is a UI framework for multi-platform development. But Kotlin multi-platform is a language and you you don't have to use uh, Compose multi-platform because Kotlin multi-platform plus Compose multi-platform uh, equals to Flutter. But 
uh, Kotlin multi-platform without Compose, without Shared UI. It's uh, just uh, a language and tooling for the multi-platform development. And so typical Kotlin framework with, uh, without shared uh, UI code, it's a uh, uh, much lighter than uh, typical Flutter framework. Yeah. Yes, the rendering engine is key, but now they're changing to Impiler. Uh, yeah, it was maybe released in uh, Flutter 3.0, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Brock, for your comments. So uh, we answered this question. Uh, probably the next question is possible to share view model between iOS and Android. We answered it, uh, I suppose. That's I would say twice. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Please uh, check our recording. So the question from Sergey for Icerock, Kotlin multi-platform by tutorials, build native apps faster by sharing code across platforms by Carlos Mota, some page. Could you tell about Mocha, Alexander? Uh, yeah, uh, I suppose that uh, Alexei told a lot of Mocha, but uh, a few words again, Mocha is a library set and uh, we try to use uh, try to give a solution for uh, typical tasks for, for the developer, for example, to work with resources, work with speech network library, and so on. And the uh, community for using uh, use it. And uh, they, they're happy, I suppose. And uh, we try to support uh, our libraries and uh, to grow it uh, further. And uh, it's a actually great that... Uh, uh, as I can suggest that uh, uh, Moko was uh, mentioned uh, in the book uh, by Karl Smota. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I didn't hear about this. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's proceed with another question. Uh, what's the typical time it takes to enable a Java mid developer on a project with Kotlin? What challenge have you faced? Mm -hmm. uh, um, yes, uh, I think it depends uh, from the developer skills, of course. But uh, from my point of view, it's uh, from several days uh, till uh, several weeks, maybe two, maybe three weeks, because um, as I mentioned before, the uh, deaf environment the same, uh, programming language the same, it's just... Uh, uh, how you uh, use uh, your project code and uh, how you can coordinate uh, your efforts and uh, how you can coordinate with different uh, developers and uh, uh, other platform uh, because you uh, have to keep in mind iOS uh, part uh, if iOS team using uh, the common uh, sharing uh, library, but uh, I think it can be days or maybe two weeks, uh, for example. From, from my point of view, maybe Costa will correct me. You know, I started with Kotlin more than six or seven years ago, so I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember some, some specific points that for me it was untypical to use upper level functions or more functional approach in my code but yeah it's uh, it is not difficult uh, for example to use rx java is more difficult task for for learning than I migrate from java to Kotlin. Yes. I wanted to mention that for example um, writing writing Cotton code is different from writing idiomatic cotton code. So sometimes what happens is somebody comes over from a Java world and wants to write Java Kotlin, <laughs> and example. that doesn't yeah. work. So you want to know, I think it's what's important is it takes practice and a lot of reading of code in order to write idiomatic Kotlin code. And that takes time. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, let's proceed to the next question. How can we connect KMM with native models it's easy or do we need extra steps i guess i can try to give an answer uh if i understand it correct uh, uh 
by native models of the outer means of the platform libraries like foundation i i think so i have to say that for the old full apple ecosystem uh foundation libraries kotlin provides own wrappers uh out of the box so when you declare your ios targets in your build script hold the uh, apple uh, ecosystem libraries will be available for you uh, in your ios uh, source sets so uh, you don't have to uh, make some extra steps for that but if you want to use something extra for example some native dependencies which was published for example like cocoa pods you can use a special plugin for that for cocoa pod support and uh, the plugin will be uh, connect and wrap a native library for you for cotton declarations to, uh, for the future using in your project okay um the next question how different is application performance on kmm and native will they be also answered that isn't it We've really yeah it. i think it was answered uh but uh i would like to add a little bit for the topic because you know there is popular opinion for example that code uh written in native languages like rust i don't know or c uh should be faster than code written for example in java but good good developer knows that it is not true uh because for example java virtual machine is highly optimized and a uh, typical developer usually writes not the optimized code and the typical code can be faster uh, on a gvm than on a uh, native binary so again uh, all the all the uh, discussion about performance and speed of your code it depends on the application code and context and depends how will you implement it okay uh i have maybe similar question uh again about native but uh it's a question about the difference between kotlin for android and kotlin native about the Could difference between that's in uh, kotlin for android and kotlin native you know um uh, I have to say that the language is the same. It's just Kotlin, so and the same as the lib for the Kotlin for Android and for Kotlin native. But uh, for example, on the Kotlin of on the on the Android side, you can use Android specific libraries, Android specific uh, API, and uh, you can call it from the Kotlin for Android. But on the Kotlin native side, you can use some native libraries. For example, I don't know, uh, libcurl, for example, for the network request on the Kotlin native for Linux side. Uh, it's a different compiler. It's a different uh, environment to run your code because on Android, it's a kind of uh, Java virtual machine. But for the Kotlin native, it's uh, just binary for your operating system. So. Uh, uh, answer depends on the uh, on the question of what <laughs> what what the difference uh, outer means. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, for JetBrains, uh, what books can you recommend to read about Kotlin and what about Kotlin multiplatform? So I've already mentioned a couple of books, but for Kotlin multiplatform, there is a book from the Codeco folks um it's the one that we mentioned earlier it's cotton multi-platform by tutorials um and it's an excellent book i've read it myself there's also another book by robert nagy uh, in a g y um he it's also a good book but i actually prefer the codeco book a little bit more um i i thought that was really well well structured really like well put um put you know it's it's like it 
basically covers all the sections of things that you would be interested in, like dependency injection, like swift interop, all these things that that's really important for knowing. I think it's I think it was a brilliant book. And I have to mention that for the modern world, the books usually are outdated faster than technology grows. So uh, my my approach here is to 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 read the official documentation and to As well. mm -hmm. yeah to search some up, uh, I don't know fresh articles or updated videos or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I also prefer watching YouTube videos. Philip Lanker, Kirill Rozov, Gladkov, thank you. Okay. Uh, what will be the interesting uh, features expected from Kotlin multiplatform? Pamela? Well, we've got, the, we've got the K2 compiler coming out. That's not really compiler multiplatform, but, you know, definitely the K2 compiler is my top favorite thing coming out. Yeah, and I, I think uh, regarding some interesting features for Kotlin multi-platform, uh, it's a difficult question for me. But, uh, at the moment, uh, I have to say that at, at the moment we are, we, we are focused on the stabilizing all the yes. tooling uh, around Kotlin multi-platform because as we said, it's uh, untypical for big companies, but we we said it publicly uh, to public uh, that we will be released to the stable uh, in in this year. So uh, mm -hmm. interesting features for Kotlin Media Platform. I, I don't know what we can uh, say here, but uh, again, we have a lot of interesting features. Uh, internally, which we uh, don't want to share too early. Yes. yes. But may I ask you here how, if it's possible to share, how uh, K2 compiler and Kotlin 2.0 will affect uh, Kotlin multi platform? Will it work faster or maybe, you know? It will affect uh, in the that we have to support it properly, but uh, all about K2, you can, all, all, all information about K2, you can see on the uh, Kotlin Conf records uh, about that because uh, K2 is a huge project inside Kotlin team. And Kotlin, uh, and the main, one of the main idea is that K2 knows about multi-platform from the start because previously, multi-platform was uh, I co first release of Kotlin uh, a lot of years ago uh, uh, was without knowledge of multi-platform, but K2 was designed as a uh, compiler who knows about multi-platform world of Kotlin. It's a huge step to write future. Okay, so maybe maybe the last question we uh, uh, took from them. I don't know what question Constantino uh, Pamela would like to answer from this three. Uh, Constantine, which one do you want to answer? <laughs> I don't mind answering. Uh, so all, all of them <laughs> good questions. <laughs> Um, you can briefly answer on them. <laughs> yeah, briefly, how to debug KMM on iOS. Uh, I have to mm -hmm. mention that there is a special plugin for Android Studio for the uh, debug, uh, for the support of debugging Kotlin native uh, on your iOS devices in, in Android Studio. So you can use it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an, uh, I have to mention that uh, your developer experience will not be the same as a uh, Kotlin for Java debugging and Kotlin for uh, Kotlin native debugger because you know uh, it's not only about Kotlin but uh, generally uh, Java debugger debugger usually is pretty good and Kotlin for GVM uh, 
supported supported so for uh, it's better to debug your Kotlin code on GVM, but you can debug your Kotlin native code as well. Uh, any place, uh, any plans to replace Gradle? Uh, I think we cannot say something mm, here. Yeah, we can't com we can't comment uh, on that. No. Yep. Uh, so how to convince I use to use? To but use your information sounds very interesting. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yes, preferred them. No. So last one for Pamela. So um, iOS developers, so actually like a lot of the times when you interview people for that, that podcast I mentioned, um, it's actually iOS developers that, that read about Kotlin multi-platform and said, hey, that sounds interesting. I'd like to, I'd like to give that a try. For example, um, at Todoist, it happened like that. Um Recently, we had people from, um, let me think who it was, but often we get iOS developers kind of bringing uh, KMP to the fore before the Android developers actually have a chance to like, say like propose this as a solution. And this is, you know, this is actually very exciting for us. Um, because it means that uh, you know that that it's it's not that hard to convince uh, iOS developers. So for for me, what's important is really just to start with empathy. When, for example, if you if you, your boss says, "Okay, let's try KMP for a little bit," um, just to start with empathy with your iOS developers, um, just understand that you know change is difficult, and that it's you know that it's going to take them some time to master. Um, master the new tools and technologies and languages that they're going to have to learn then um, it's good to like explain what cotton multi-platform is and how it works then give them some good examples of where it actually worked and then um, I think it's like do a proof of concept together like how will it actually work in our company in our projects and then after that you know just Keep on answering questions. Keep on being proactive about sharing knowledge, and so on. So I think that's the way that you convince, like any team, to to adopt any technology. I guess. But for iOS, Swift is not that different from Kotlin, and I'm personally, I mean, I think that's a big selling point. You know, it's it's not that different, and they they share a lot of things in common, a lot of ideas in common. So. Uh, it's it's much easier to go from um, a, a language like from a language like Swift to Kotlin than other languages, for example. So, and you know, you also because just because you are an Iris developer doesn't mean that you have to write Kotlin code. It just means that you have to consume some derivative of Kotlin code. Um, so it depends on your team as well whether you want to contribute to the shared code. Or whether you just want to consume it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for so much. Alexander, maybe if you would like to. Add. Yeah. Yeah. If, uh, I just uh, would like uh, to say that uh, Pamela is right. Uh, you have to discover all pros and cons uh, of using this technology. You have to see and have to show the best examples. That's why. We, uh, one of our first uh, public repository was a template project, uh, which used uh, some features for iOS, some features for Android, uh, to develop from the bath uh, plot platforms to see how they, they can do the usual things uh, in, in a new environment. And uh, you have to be and here and you have to keep uh, give answers uh, for the questions and to give support and uh, for, to discover all advantages of this technology i agree okay yeah, guys as i know the, uh, there may be the biggest problem for ios developers uh, build system for in the Kotlin it's a gradle because it's a problem not only for ios developers but for Android developers as well, but they they try uh, not to say about that. But uh, yeah, uh, maybe you you have to you have to start from the uh, from the step by step guide how 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 
how it works, how the build works, uh, what uh, Kotlin multiplatform. It's uh, not uh, black magic. It's just a language uh, which can be compiled to the the same binaries as uh, as you know. I think we need to have a, a conference for iOS developer how we need to use Kotlin and learn it. Okay, guys, <laughs> maybe. The last small question for you, and we will finish our talk. Um, um, discussion for Kotlin team. Uh, how are we going uh, to celebrate Kotlin release? <laughs> With cake. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't when, know. When I imagine, um, it, uh, I no. imagine about Kotlin a rave crossing roads, some parrot. In, in the of Amsterdam or Berlin, I don't know. Usually, don't know, for the but... developers, yeah, for the developers, yeah. big stable release means that after the release, you you, you will work harder. Yes. <laughs> so it's maybe a quick cake and then <laughs> back to work. <laughs> yeah, we are we are waiting it very soon. I hope. So, guys, uh, thank you. Thank you for joining uh, for joining such call. I hope it was uh, useful for everyone. And thank you for your answer. And thank you, participant, for your questions. Yeah, guys, hope to see you again. Have fun with Kotlin. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. -bye. bye, -bye.